They say that it's all right. We all believe in the same God. As long as you believe. They say that it's all right. They say that it's all right. They do it in the name of love. We're not supposed to judge. And they say that it's all right. They say that it's all right. But I don't understand. They say that it's all right. What's the difference between right and wrong? And why did God send his only son? And just because they make it alone, they say that it's all right. A woman has a right. Then why can't I speak mine? If they say that it's alright We all have the choice to believe what we believe But who gave you the right to push your choice on me? Just because they make it the law. Amen. 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 Prayer. Amen. Uh, Father, we just love you, Lord. We just thank you for this beautiful day you've given us. Yes. Amen. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord, that we still continually can come together in peace and talk about you and share your love and share your mercy, Father, when so many are struggling, even right across the border, Father, so many churches. I was told uh, yesterday that quite a few uh, churches have been burned down in Canada, mm. and so much is happening in Australia, and Father, that we live in such days and such times, but you told us to look up and rejoice, for our redemption draws nigh. Yes. But Lord, not only are we to look up and rejoice, but to pour out. Or to go out, Lord, that we should not let anything hinder us from sharing your love, sharing the light, Father. We ask that you bless this service, bless this day, Father, bless yes, our Lord. hearts, bless our minds and our spirits. Father, use us. And the only way we can be used is that if we abide in you, that we totally surrender to you, Father. You are our total blessing. We need nothing else. We can't add to you. We can't subtract from you. You are everything. And, Lord, we want to be content in you. We have seen things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, yeah, like I said, I left, I, I left quite early this morning and a little tired. I was up quite a bit. As a matter of fact, leaving my house, and, uh, the bear was laying right out in the yard looking at me leave. I was just waving to him. <laughs> yeah. Did it wave back? No, he didn't. The other day, a real quick story. You know me and my cameras. I'm a, I love doing photography, and uh, I have a... Uh, lilac bush outside our window. Well, I got really close to it, and I, I usually have a camouflage blanket I cover up with. <laughs> and I go outside and I photograph. There was a beautiful, beautiful uh, cardinal that was just different. I wanted to photograph. So I got quite close to the bush, and I sat there, and the bird came, and I had my camera. That's all I could see. Nothing else but that bird. And uh, 
the bird finally left and I started hearing the squirrels, you know how squirrels complain, anybody goes hunting knows about squirrels. And I figured they were complaining because of me. <laughs> and I was sitting there looking and I decided to move my camera and not even 10 feet from me was a big bear coming right at me. <laughs> he didn't see me. He, 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 you know, I was under the sheet and I thought, oh Lord, what do I do? Because <laughs> I'm seeing this big black bear come right at me, I just jumped up as fast as I could, threw the sheet off my head and uh -huh. jumped up. He ran that way and I ran this way. We're <laughs> <laughs> both looking back at him. <laughs> and I thought, oh, the thing for the Lord had grace, because I didn't know what to do at first. I thought, I got to do something. He's going to right now on top of me and not know it, but God is good. Amen. Um, Amen. I had a wonderful trip to the reservation. It was difficult. I went alone. And uh, I worked with Pastor Mike, but we went to another church worked at Wounded Knee. You know, I really wanted to go to Memorial Day and to the motorcycle ride in Washington, D.C. I was looking forward to that, but I felt the Lord said, no, I need to go out there. And Mike told me about the church at Wounded Knee. And I thought, wow, that would be a really blessing to go out there and share the gospel of Jesus Christ in such a place. And anybody knows any history about uh, Lakota Indians and what happened at Wounded Knee, well, this church is right there at the massacre site. Uh, what the 7th, 7th Cavalry did to the 200, I think 90 Indians who sure. murdered them, and um, men, women, and children. So this church is right there, right you know, within feet of uh, where the massacre happened across the street is a so-called memorial, which is not very much. Uh, it's just kind of an insult to the Indians. But we had a really good outreach here. This pastor, uh, has been gone through a, a lot himself. He's a Vietnam veteran. He just came back from having heart surgery. He couldn't do much. But the amount of people that showed up, I mean, I, and I had a load of stuff. We had plenty of plenty of booklets, scripture booklets. Uh, matter of fact, I'm wearing my shirt today. They sent me this in the mail. And, you know, this is one of my favorite ministries. Just throw this out. Uh, this is their 60 years, and their little booklets. You know. You know talked about sharing the gospel. Uh, I told the last time I was here, I said they were putting out six million booklets a month that they trust God to put out scripture booklets. They're up to eight million. Amen. In a world that's shutting down, God, God is not being shut down. Amen. Amen. God is not being shut down. But, um, to go on to that, so we had a lot of those booklets there and I was I felt blessed when I got home and got this shirt and it just was an encouragement. How strong and how mighty the gospel is, how righteous it is and how powerful it is and that we cannot hide. And the devil's doing all he can to shut us down, to keep us quiet. But when we were there, um, I was just so blessed because the Indians are quite hard against the gospel. But we had so much new stuff, we had no junk. I mean, had tons of cars, buying stuff from Northwoods and, and stuff like that, and blankets. Uh, good clothing, just a lot, a lot of good stuff. And the people were coming up, and uh, two couple ladies come up when we first got there. We didn't have much help, and they said, uh, oh, you got some clothing. Well, we said, we need some help, and those ladies worked all day from morning to night helping us. And so we made a good friendship with them, and was able to share the gospel with them. And had just a, I just really was blessed. And I spent a few days even with Mike, uh, sharing with him. He's gone through a lot physically. Pastor, he's been in, um, had a couple operations he had to go for. And uh, uh, I'll make that brief. I just want to share more on what's going on in missions. But on my way home, I was able to share. And when I got home, I wanted to, uh, I still want to ride my bike. I enjoy riding my bike. My bike and I missed uh, Washington. And I decided to go up to, uh, Mackinac that I heard there was a, you know, they had a motorcycle rally. So I went and I brought my some scripture booklets and I had a few of my books with me. And you know what I learned, I, you know, I, I enjoy going out. And I just wrote something about this. But we Christians, we don't fit in. No. You cannot fit into this world. No. I mean, there's nothing going, nothing wrong with going out and joining yourself. I enjoy fishing, I enjoy hunting, hunting I enjoy photography, I, you know, I, like riding, Frank does, we like riding motorcycles. 
but you know, you feel out of place. You just do not, we will not, and we as Christians should not feel bad that we don't fit in. It's quite the opposite. Yeah. It's a little dangerous when we start finding ourselves fitting in. Yes. Something's wrong when we feel so comfortable in this world. It's never comfortable. But I had a tremendous opportunity to share with some people out there. And I met this veteran that came up to me, another veteran, and uh, we started sharing. And this particular man I spent uh, a couple hours with him. His name is Ricky from Hubbard Lake. And they ended up being a Christian and they shared with my book. And it's amazing how the Lord just uh, sets up things and sets up meeting places. And I was, after I was sharing with him, and I shared my book with him, I got home, and I, you know, I'm working on this trip to the uh, reservation again in the Cambodia and all that, and I needed blankets, lots of blankets. We were trying to buy a lot of blankets, so I asked Mike, what do they need, and that. And this man wrote me, and he said, uh, you got a little money coming, he said, $25 for blankets. I said, great, I said, that's at least two or three blankets. I got $1,000 in the mail from him. <laughs> And I said, how oh, God set something. How what a blessing the Lord is. This is not for us or and my kingdom or anybody else's kingdom, it's for God's kingdom. And how yes. God brings yeah. people together. Matter yeah. of fact, when I was there, I was uh, outside the American Legions and I belong and I never go there. I belonged to American Legions for years, but I've never gone into one. <laughs> and this guy came over and he seen my bike and he seen I was a veteran, he invited me into the American Legion. Of course, there's a lot of drinking. I went outside and sat out with him and his family and was able to share with them. Good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was able to share about three or four different heads, just as much of an outreach at that rally as I did uh, coming home. We, as Christians, need to be used. Yes. We need to allow the Lord to use us wherever we're at. It's not about going overseas, as I shared before, but it's about letting God work in us. Isn't it amazing that um, we sent some money out over, we've been sending money over to Africa. We're not letting the devil shut us down. Yes. No matter what he says, we're not letting him shut, shut us down. And we sent money to the Roth and also the pastor of the mountains, which I lost contact. I couldn't figure out how to get him some money. And this is a missionary lines pastor, a tremendous man. This is where we put a lot of our wells. And finally got his name and I, he had wrote and, and said yeah, they wanted a well and that's what we're working for. Well, I sent him some money because I know he has a family, he has all those people up in the mountains. And he sent some pictures back and it was such a blessing. He took that money out and money, he didn't spend it on his family, he bought all this rice and different things for everybody in the fellowship hall. And they, but what amazed me, this is a place that oftentimes the gospel has never even reached. Mm. A lot of that area. But you know what's reached there is fear. Hmm. All over the world, fear is traveling. It's amazing when you pull up on, the, on these photos and you see people wearing a mask, a diaper on their face, a baby diaper or something. Everybody all over the world. Because one doctor death in Washington said you need to do it. So it's spread worldwide. Get the gospel. How, 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 I thought about it, how fast is light, 186,000 miles per second? Yeah. And we're the light of the world? Mm -hmm. Think of that. Mm. We are the light of the world. Should fear outdo us? No. Coca-Cola outdo us? No. You know Coca-Cola has reached a place we have, the gospel has not reached. And the Bible tells us, Jesus told us, you know, the gospel should be preached, must be preached to all the world. And I believe we're at that point. But there's still so many out there in these areas of the world that have never been reached by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. You know, and before I, I want to share just a few scriptures, you know, more than a few. I'm just going to read a chapter because it becomes so. Become in my heart, so matter of fact, on the way down, I listened to the whole book of Isaiah. <coughs> I've been going through Isaiah just about every single day. I haven't mm -hmm. been able to get out of it. Well, at night time I go to bed and I turn on uh, maybe the book of Acts or something. For some reason, for the last month, no matter what book I turn on and listen to, I wake up to Isaiah. I keep waking up to Isaiah, so finally I started digging deeper into it. And I just was so 
blown away by the first chapter of what is happening in this world today. And in Roman, I mean, in First John five nineteen, it says the whole. Sometimes people don't understand the scripture, and it bothers them because we see there's a lot of good people in this world. We think about our forefathers. We say all oh, these good people when they did this and. And they were righteous and all this and that. Yes, there are righteous people in this world, and it alters the state of this world but for a while, just for a brief season. But the Bible tells us in 1 John 5 9, the whole world lies in the hands of the evil one. No. Think of that. The whole world. Yes. So no matter what we do sooner or later, I don't care how good things are going to get. Could get. Sooner or later they fall. Because the whole world, like, we are not of this kingdom. That's what we don't fit in. We will never fit in. We should never feel at home here. Amen. Jesus, when they took him before the court, hey, this is kingdoms on mine. And we we're born again into a new kingdom. Yes, sir. We're born again to a new life. It's not this world. It's not in the things of this world. And we see things waxing worse and worse. And I see Christians getting really, even myself, I found myself getting caught up with. It's easy to get caught up with talking to people with what's going on. You can't help it because things are changing day by day and quickly. And sometimes I found myself, and even as a veteran, finding feeling rage about what is going on around us and seeing the changes going on so fast. But then I look at the scriptures, the whole world lies in the hands of the evil one. Yes. And we sometimes cry, how long, O Lord? How long? The Bible tells us we won't, we won't know, we'll know the day and hour, but we sure know the seasons, don't we? Yes. And we cannot help but look at the seasons. And, and I was reading <laughs> Isaiah's book. Tough book. It's a book of judgment over and over and over again, yet it's a book that's always talking about the remnant. It's amazing how many times it talks about the remnant. It doesn't talk about a great gathering as many of y'all, oh, there's a great revival in the last days, there's going to be a great, and the Bible says, a great falling away. It takes, talks about the remnant. And, I, and after I was reading all this and looking at this, and it's been, it's been really eaten away from my heart because he starts thinking, is this it? Is this it, Lord? Well, I think the apostles felt that way back in the book of Acts. The signs were there. But, you know, in a sense, I believe we're at that spot where we can say, this is it. Amen. This is it. And I, and I couldn't find it any more clear. And I'm going to go through this because so, it is a, you know, it's a long chapter. But I just want to read it. And, and let it speak to your heart. And you look at what Isaiah is saying here. But think of these days. We know that he's talking to uh, about the Jewish people. But the all scriptures inspired for, prophet, for, for teaching, for proof, for instruction, for training in righteousness, and it's for today. And over and over you find in Isaiah, it talks about in the last days, you'll know these things. In the last days, we see that in Jeremiah, we see it in Ezekiel, we see it in Daniel, we see it all through the Bible. <coughs> and if you start this chapter out, it says, The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judea and Jerusalem in the days of, and I started looking at Uzziah, Jotham, I can't pronounce some of these Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judea. And I thought about, what if you took those names out? I'm not going to say any names, but some of the names of the leaders in there today. Mm. Okay. In the days of, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And now listen to the rest of this. You want to know if this is the last day? Oh, it is. Listen to this. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his mother's crib. But Israel does not know my, no, my people do not, did not consider. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, they have forsaken the Lord, they have provoked the Holy One of Israel, 
unto anger. They are gone away backwards. We cannot turn on the news. We cannot see what's happening, I mean, by moment. Almost by second. I was just told the other day a pastor was arrested in Canada for having a church meeting with his family in his home. Just his family. Mm. Why should you be stricken anymore? You revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and sick. And the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot even to the head there is no soundness in it. But wounds and bruises and pure putrefying sores. They have not been clothed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. And you know what? I mean, it's getting worse. The church of this today, the modern day church, is so compromised and so much a part of this. Yes. So much a part of this. And they're not healing. They're not bringing the ointment of God's word. I wrote something the other day that sounds offensive to people. But, and people wrote to me, maybe they misunderstand what I'm saying, but I said, I cannot sit in the church when a pastor gets up there and constantly talks about, God wants to bless you, God's going to bless you, God's going to bless you. I'm going to get up and walk out. Hmm. I don't want to hear it. Because the moment I got saved and gave my life to Jesus Christ, I got the complete blessing. Yeah, I cannot add to it and I cannot subtract it. Absolutely. It is total, it is complete, there's nothing more you can add to it, nothing more. He is everything, he is all in all. Amen. And they have so many, oh, God wants to bless you. Constantly telling me that, something's wrong. And a church who wants to constantly hear that, something is wrong. Yes. Something is drastic, it's another gospel, it's another message. It's not the truth in Christ. He is everything. Yes. Everything. And you, you understand why Paul says, I can, I, can learn, I can be content with whatever state I'm in, whether I got much or little when he was in prison when he wrote it. Because he was content in Jesus Christ. Even when somebody wrote me, he said, well, I have to pray for it. Yes. We pray that the Lord heals and blesses. What are we, what are we asking, though? We're asking for God's will to be done. We cannot manipulate God. We cannot twist God. We can't get him to do our will. He says, you ask not, you have not because you ask not, but we ask what? According to his will. His will. And what was Jesus' will? My will was to do the Father's bidding. Yes. Of another kingdom. Not of this kingdom. And this is what he's saying here. I, you know, from the sole of the foot even to the head, there's no soundness in it. When we look at that, we see not only in Washington, but we see it oftentimes in the church. But wounds and bruises and pure, purifying sores, they have not been closed, neither bound up, neither multiplied with an ointment. Your country, listen, your country is desolate. Yes. Whoa, think of Milwaukee. Listen to this new verse. In Oregon, Portland, Oregon. Next verse. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers devour in your presence. What happened? What's going on in the border? Strangers are flocking in left and right. They're coming over. Strangers. Strangers devour in your presence and is desolate as overthrown by strangers. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. He's talking about the remnant. You know, there's only a, he's talking about there's just a remnant of true believers. Except the Lord of hosts had left us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like a war. Yes. God always has his people. And that could be in the maze, if it's still in the light of eternity, that's a remnant. I'm sure it is. We don't know. Only God knows the number of the people who follow him. But we look at this world now crazy. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of then he just as we would have been in. What's he calling the leaders? 
Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of the more. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? It's like the song Jeff said. We're trying to peace God with all our religious activities, all our ideas, all we think God, you know, hey, if I go to church, if I give tithes, we're good. If I do my religious rituals, hey, we're good. Coexist. You see that bumper sticker all over the world, coexist. It's terrible. And that's what he's saying here. To what purpose is the multitudes of your sacrifices unto me? Says the Lord, I am full of burnt offerings. Of, I am full of it. He doesn't want it. Burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. And I delight not in the blood of bullocks or lambs or goats. When you come to me before, to be, appear before me, who has required these at your hand to read my courts? And what he is saying is that people are trying to offer up the work of their own hands. Just like Cain did. We're trying to press God of who we are. And that, I'm, God's not impressed with none of us. But his son. His son alone. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's when Jesus works through us and in us. And we abide in him. And just as Jesus depended totally on the Father when he was on earth. We, we need to be totally dependent on Christ alone. And every time I'm not, I'm, I fall into a error. I find myself angry. I find myself out of place. I find myself not in the will of God. The moment I start adapting to this world, I feel this, you know, you feel that. You feel that check in your spirit saying, what are you doing? You're a pilgrim. We read the book Pilgrim's Progress. Tremendous book. And the struggles along the way that each and every single one of us face, we all face it. We all face the battles. Our journey is narrow. It's narrow. It's not the wide way of destruction. This is the wide religion. is the wide way of destruction. Bring no more vain prayers to me. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of the assemblies. I cannot away. I cannot away with it. It is iniquity. Even the solemn meetings. Isn't it amazing? God saying it's sin. You know how many people come to my door? That's not you come to our church. You you know you're not a Christian, but you don't go to church on Saturday. Or you're not a Christian because you don't read the King James version. Or you're not a Christian because you don't babble or whatever. That we go on and on and on. And here's God saying, No, we turn our eyes and our heart off the King of Kings and Lord of Lords who says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, there's no other way. There's a complete indifference in Jesus Christ, I don't need to add anything to him, and I reject anybody who adds that anything to, tries to add anything to the Christian walk with Jesus Christ. For he keeps nothing from us that we need. He's never lied to us, and we say he never cheats us, does he? He never leads us astray. Yet this, this, this chapter here is telling us what is happening in these days. Your new moons and your point of feast, my soul hateth them. They are a trouble to me. I am weary to bear them. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. When you make many prayers, I will not hear you. Your hands are full of blood. You know, I think of that when I read the new moons, I hear, I remember the big moon, all oh, the blood moons are out. And you read all this stuff, oh, everybody's looking at the blood moons and all this. We get into all this stuff and sell books and it makes somebody rich. I know the Lord knows the day he's coming. I know he needs, he knows the hour. I know that anybody who isn't for Christ is antichrist. So I don't have to go figure out who the big guy is or whoever it's going to be. That's his business. I know that all these things will be fulfilled. And I know that if I hide my heart and my life in Jesus Christ, and I'm able to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Yes. Preach the gospel. It is good to learn about Revelation. It is good to learn about these things. To study to show thyself the proof. But what does it do? To equip us to go out and to be servants, servants unto the Lord. Too many of us go to church over and over and we're ever learning, ever learning, but never come to the full knowledge of the truth. We're constantly, constantly 
if Pastor John's preaching Bible study year after year and got the same people coming year after year and never doing nothing, what is that saying? It's not John's fault or Pastor's fault. It's what Paul said, or to Timothy. They're ever learning, but they don't come to the full knowledge of the truth. We go to the Word to be equipped to be soldiers of Jesus Christ. What's that song I was trying to look for? I am a soldier of the cross, a follower of the Lamb. It says, what's it? I, how's the first go? Shall I desire to go to heaven on a flowery bed of bees? While others fought to win the fight, fight and sailed on bloody seas? Too much of our Christianity is a flowery bed of bees. Mm. Makes us sleep. He says, wash you, make yourself clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes, cease to do evil, learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. Boy, there's a lot of fatherless. They're saying, oh, look at all the people that have been shot, all the kids that have been shot in Chicago. And most of them are what? Homes without fathers. Yes. <laughs> and we're to plead the case. That's why I'm... Um, I stay part of this church because it's a church that's made up of people that know that. They know, they have a desire, they have a hunger to reach those that are hurting. And they can't be any other way in Christianity. Yes. Because Jesus came for the broken. Come now, I lo we, lo we love this verse. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be like wool. That's a beautiful verse. We think of that. We say, Jesus, is, the Lord Almighty, come. Come and reason with me. Know me. Know him. Know him in the fellowship of his suffering. Know him in the fellowship of his joy. Know him in his fellowship. The only way we can know him is in the fellowship of the person of Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Draw near to God. How's, how do we resist the devil? We draw near to God. Yes. We draw near to the living God. We try to fight him on our own, what's going to happen? We fail. Yeah, we fail all the time. Well, I'll tell you, my wife will tell you that. <laughs> if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. What is the good of the land? Is it this world? It's all its false pleasures. I enjoy, I mean, there's nothing wrong with going out and enjoying life. That God, the earth and the world. The earth is the Lord's. The world isn't. The earth is beautiful. I love nature. I mean, even the other day, I experienced that bear. I don't know, pushing the envelope. But there's something about seeing what God has created and seeing how God has put instinct in the animals and how they live off their instinct. It's uh, how smart they are. God has put them in. And I like what up. Uh, Major Ann Thomas says, a man without God is worse than any animal. The animals know what they're doing. But a man can be the most brutal person without God. Look at 60 million babies in our country alone, aborted. Shame. Now you got uh, people telling us that there's no such thing as a boy or a girl. Mm. <laughs> and you think, what? My grandson's looking at me and they go, what? <laughs> is it, you know, it's like, what's going on? And how confusing it is. I mean, before I finish this chapter, I just tell you a little story on the way back from the bike rally. I was riding my motorcycle alone and I pulled into the, I like going to the lighthouse and there's one called 40 Mile Point, 40 miles from the bridge and 40 miles from Alpena. And it's a living lighthouse and really kind of neat. And I was out there and I'm just thinking how kids are hungry today. They're hungry for love. And I pulled in, there was nobody out on the beach with a mother, I think, and two kids. And there was two men sitting up on a bench or talking way away from these kids. They weren't paying attention to the kids at all. I assume they were the fathers. There was two women. And I'm out there trying to take pictures, and, and most of us know that you can't even hardly talk to a little child today because of the way the world is. Well, this little boy wasn't having it. I'm trying to take my picture of the little boy behind me with a pile of sticks, like we were a kid. He had a big pile. He was so proud of his sticks, he, he was following me everywhere he was going. Want to build a cabin? <laughs> <laughs> I 
controls. Yeah, you know. And I'm trying to be watchful and I'm saying, I'm encouraging him. I said, looks like you're going to build a good cabin. He said, yeah, come on out to the island with me. We're going to the island. You can help build a cabin. And, and it was touching my heart. And I just thought the hunger and the, and the mom was really watchful, which was really kind of neat. She was watching her child. But the dad was nowhere around. That boy was desiring attention. People are hungry for attention. And what touched my heart that day, just before I left, the little girl come up. She had a handful of stones. She was collecting rocks. And she comes up. She goes, these are for you. And I said, well, I really can't carry all of them. I got a motorcycle. I said, I'll take this one. And I took one, but you know what she did? I got this at home in a box and I keep it. She pulled another one out, the little one. She goes, this is a diamond. This is for you. And that so touched my heart, broke my heart. And then to her, it was a diamond, and to me, it was too. And I thought, out of the mouth of babes, out of that type of love, and that, that we have the diamond of God's word, we have God's life, we have God's, I mean, we're going up, we're really giving diamonds up. Yes. And you think of that little girl, and I think out, out of the purity of her heart, she was just pouring out everything to her. That could have been the most expensive diamond in the world. She would have gave it. She would have gave it. She just, to her it was. And to me it was, too. It's all to have that type of life. To have that kind of, Jesus told us, unless you become like a child. Unless you become like that. And that's such an innocence and such a willingness to give up our life and give up our love for others. Let me end with a few more verses we got here. How is this? He says, but if you refuse to rebel, you shall be devoured with a sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. How has the faithful city become a harlot? It was full of judgment, righteousness lodged in it, but now murders. We talk about a fallen father. And we look at this nation, how free it was, and there was some godly people. There's always been wickedness. There's always been people discriminated and, and treated bad. But we also know there were godly people in this nation. But he's saying this, and it reminds me, when I read that, I thought about today. How has the faithful city become such a harlot? And we have become a harlot. It was full of judgment, righteousness, lodged in it, but now it's murderers. The silver has become dross. Thy, and I like this, thy wine mixed with water. We, we hear the term all the time, the gospel has been watered down. Yeah. We know that wine in the Bible is talking about a lot of times, it's his word. We have mixed water with the wine. We have mixed this world with God's truth. And it's not complicated to share the gospel. It's really sharing Jesus Christ. It's where you're telling people to come to repentance. Turn from the wicked ways and turn to the light, the life. Come to fellowship and grow in him. And in him we live and breathe and have our very being. Being. Thy silver has become dross, thy wine mixed with water. The princes are rebellious and the commanders of thieves. Everyone loveth gifts and followeth after rewards. Boy, that reminds me of the church. They judge not the fatherless, neither doth thou cause of the widow come unto them. That's why the harvest is plenty and the labors are few. We got more people in the church looking for gifts and blessings than they do giving their lives up for us. Yes. To be a blessing to others. Not to always be looked to be blessed, but to be a blessing to others. Therefore said the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, ah, I will ease me of mine adversaries and avenge me of mine enemies. And I'm reading this and I've been reading all the other chapters and I think of Isaiah. 40, 41, 42, especially 40, talks about what God thinks of the nation. They ain't nothing. All that we're going on is nothing. The Bible says God laughs at the plans of these nations, at the plans of men. He will put them in disarray. We know what's going to happen. And all their pride and all their arrogance, so look at them. I think of David crying out, and he was angry about the wicked prospering, but God showed him their end, and he repented because he got to see what was going to happen to their end. And it really bothered him that it was going to be that bad. God's got it. You see, around where I live, they got little uh, yard signs. They probably got them down here. It says, God's got this. And he has it. 
Amen. with this. And I will turn my hand upon thee and purely purge away thy dross and take away all thy tin. And I will restore thy judges at, at, as at the first and thy counselors at the beginning. Afterward thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. That it should be us. In the midst of all this, is redeemed. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment and her converts with righteousness. We are as converts. We have to stand in righteousness. We have to stand in Jesus Christ. And the destruction of the transgressors and the sinners shall be together and they, should, they that forsake the Lord shall be consumed. All that we see that's happening, all the pride and all the arrogance, it's not going to last long. But in the same sense, it should break our hearts because we know there's somebody out there that wants to hear. There's somebody out there that needs to hear. There's somebody out there that needs to be pulled from this darkness. Yes. For they shall be ashamed of the oaths which ye have desired, and ye shall be confounded for the guidance they have chosen, which is all false. For ye shall be as an oak whose leaf fadeth, and as a garden that has no water. That's this world. And the strong shall be as a toad, and the maker of it as a spark, and they shall both burn together, and none shall quench them. That is what is happening in this world. I challenge you, I mean, there's so much here in that book of Isaiah, and of course the whole Bible, but go home, read chapter 40. It's a powerful chapter, a chapter of encouragement to God's people. 40, 41, chapter 42, it's a wonderful chapter, yet also a tough chapter. Years ago, I was complaining. It was me and my wife and my family. We, had, we didn't have much. And we were living in an office space. I had no home or nothing. And I wasn't blaming God. I, you know, I just didn't understand things at times. So I was kind of like worried about my family. I was on my knees and uh, not turning my back on God. You know, I just recently read somebody. It was all God. Oh, God, God forsook me. God, I, I, that bothers me. Any Christian saying such a thing. Hmm. Never believe God ever forsook me, and now I will have it. We all go to time we don't understand what God is doing. You go to your boss to see what yeah, you do. Yeah, you just you trust him no matter what, even if he takes your head, if you lose your head. Yes, sir. And I just remember on my knees that night, crying, kind of crying out to us, praying for my family, and just praying, Lord, I want you. And I, I didn't know what to do, and I opened up Isaiah 40. What's it? I have, I have 41, I believe it is 14. And that particular uh, translation said, as soon as I opened it, I started laughing after what I read. And I wrote an article after it. Why do you fear, a worm? I am the Lord thy God. I am the deliverer of Israel. I was so smiling that night, so blessed. And I wrote an article called The Blessing of Being a Worm. Mm. Oh, uh, <laughs> think, of it. think of a worm. You pick it up, there's no strength. Or it's full of mud. It's full of, we come from the dust of the earth. There's a blessing in being a worm. Yes. And allowing God to have us. When we think we're something, we ain't nothing. I am the Lord thy God. I'm the one that delivers. I'm the one. God is going to deliver us from all that's going on in this world. He's bigger than the White House. Uh, or the Nut House, or whatever we call it now. <laughs> <laughs> He's bigger than all these kingdoms. I, I, I'm getting letters from Albert and all them. The countries are shutting down again in Albert and in Africa. It's under martial law. And, and uh, yet they're still reaching out. They can't even go out of the providence. And, but still the word is going out. And I'm, I'm, I'm amazed that even with Ratha, and he's going to the boat people, we sent him some and reaching out to whatever they can do. Then they get that uh, email, which I was surprised to get all the way up in the mountains of the highlands, right? and to see what the pastor's doing. It's just blessing my soul. That who can stop the light? Light travels at 186,000 miles per second. Whoa. Are we are the light of the world. Amen. Who's going to stop us? We read Isaiah, and that's just a glimpse of what's happening. Can't go through. You can read Jeremiah, Daniel, Ezekiel, Revelation, the books of Peter, and we see all that's happening today, and we go, whoa. But we need to look up and rejoice, but we also need to look up and be available. Amen. 
It's not crossing the seas, it's abiding on the cross of Jesus Christ and being available when so many, because we, you know, just like I went to that rally, I, I didn't, wasn't expecting to meet that guy. But the opportunity was arose and it was such a blessing than to go into a place where people are drinking beer and all that and to share the gospel of Jesus Christ outside with them. Just say, Lord, here I am. Use me. Use us. Use us. Father, we come before and we just thank you that it is sad that we see what's happening to our country. I love my country. I fought for this. <coughs> I think of all the veterans. I think of all when I go into Arlington and I see the price that was paid for so many young men. Father, I think of all the sins that have gone on before us. The path that has been paid by their blood and the way and the martyrs, Father, so open up doors so that we can reach into all the world and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are soldiers. We are soldiers of Christ. Soldado de Cristo, as we say in Spanish. And you called us, Lord, to be available to you, Jesus. That's all we need to be. It's to be available to you, that we surrender to you, as Romans 12, 1 tells us, that we offer up ourselves as a living sacrifice. This is our acceptable form of worship, as it says in the American stand. This is true worship, that we say, Lord, here I am. Send me, as Isaiah said in that verse 1, Isaiah mm -hmm. 6. Here am I. But we don't have it in our strength, but you sure do. And it is a blessing to be a worm, because you are the one. You are the deliverer. You're the one that's going to see it through all these times. And you've given us the promise. You will see it through. You will take care of us. You will keep us. And we're thankful for that. And thank you for this church, Lord. Thank you for Pastor John, and Paul, and Doug, and Matt, and, and Tony, and all those that have been working here, Wayne, and Frank, and Kathy, and many others, Father. And Debbie, and Father. The list is endless. The people that are a church like this is so fruitful and faithful. Just bless them in these last days, Lord, that we would be that light that moves at 186,000 miles per second. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.